we will see how to configure Audacity properly for voice recording. Proper recording setup is crucial for voiceover success. If you can record your voice properly, the rest of the audio editing process becomes easy. Good quality voiceover recording is non-negotiable and the sooner you realize this, the easier it becomes to achieve your voiceover goal. You may wonder why I am emphasizing so much on a good quality recording. There are two reasons behind it. First, it is important for voiceover success. There is no way to turn a bad recording into a good quality audio. Second, I work closely with aspiring voiceover artists and even with professional voiceover artists who want to get into the personal voiceover business. Some professional voice artists mainly work in TV, radio, or with other audio production companies. They only do that voiceover part and the audio production is done by a professional team. When they try to be in a personal voiceover career, they have the wrong perception of recording quality. Some people believe there is some magic in the software that makes the voice sound professional. But that is far from the truth. If you have the false belief that you can solve every problem with software like Audacity, you must realize the truth. Bad recording can never become close to professional quality. I hope you understand these points. Let's move forward with the proper recording configuration in Audacity. Please note that I am using the classic theme of Audacity. If your Audacity interface looks different and you want to get the same as mine, go to Audacity Preferences. Select Interface from the left sidebar, and then choose Classic Theme. I find this classic theme convenient and it looks similar to any older version of Audacity. To get the best quality recording, you have to set these settings properly. For some of these, the default settings are okay. We will now see details about that. You can do the required configuration from the audio setup button. The first thing to set is the desired microphone for recording. You can choose it from the recording device. You will see one microphone has a tick mark beside it. That means the microphone with the tick mark will be used for recording. For me, it is set as a MacBook Pro microphone at the moment. If I wish to change the microphone selection, I have to click on that microphone from the list. For example, my dynamic microphone is connected through the Scarlett 2i2 USB interface. If I want that microphone, I have to click on it. If I check the recording device now, you will see the tick mark beside Scarlett 2i2 USB. You see selecting a microphone is quite easy. You click on the microphone name and you are done selecting it. However, sometimes beginners make a mistake in selecting the microphone. They forget to set the microphone and record something with the wrong microphone. It happens because we cannot see which microphone is selected. There is a solution to this mistake. There is a toolbar called Device Toolbar that is handy to avoid such mistakes. You can enable the Device Toolbar from View, Toolbars. There is no tick mark beside the Device Toolbar at the moment, meaning it is not active. I will click on the Device Toolbar and it will be active. The Device Toolbar is active now and you can see a new toolbar has been added here. The Device Toolbar always shows you the selected microphone. There is very little chance of recording with the wrong microphone as you can always see which mic you are using for recording. You can also choose a microphone from the device toolbar. The same selection technique will work here, you click on the microphone name and it will be selected. The change will be reflected in the audio setup button too. You can see that the same mic is selected both in the device toolbar and the recording device. A quick announcement. You are watching a video from my Audacity course for beginners. This course is a one-stop solution for audiobook narration, professional voiceover, solo podcasts, or any sort of voiceover with Audacity. If you want a complete step-by-step -step guide, this course is suited for you. You can get this course from this Patreon page. If you are looking for a robust learning experience, you can get the Audacity Bundle. The Audacity Bundle has a couple of courses, some pre-built macros, and a custom macro with professional EQ. You will find all the links in the description. Back to the video lecture again. After selecting the microphone, the next thing is the recording channel. For voice recording you should record on a mono recording channel. If you are recording music, stereo may be desired. But for voiceover, you should use mono unless specified otherwise. We will see later in this course the difference between a mono and stereo recording channel. For now, stick to the mono recording channel. You can also set the recording channel from the device toolbar. If you are using an audio mixer for recording, you may see more than two recording channels. Even some microphones can show only one recording channel. For example, if I switch to a different microphone, you will see only a mono channel available. As long as you get the mono recording channel, you are okay to record your voice. Please note that the same configuration will be shown in the device toolbar and audio setup options. You can see only the mono recording channel is available and set in the audio setup like the device toolbar. We will now check some configurations from the audio settings. 
the default settings are okay for the configurations I am going to show. But still, you need to have some idea what those are and what should be the values. You can see some options in this quality section of audio settings. We can see the default configurations here for the project sample rate and default sample format. What are these things is a bit of technical discussion. I won't go deep into that discussion, but just know that it is related to analog to digital conversion. The sound we produce is an analog signal to the microphone. But a computer cannot store analog signal. A computer needs digital data and these configurations are related to that. With proper sample rate and sample format, a computer can truly represent the sound a microphone captures. If you didn't get what I just said, no problem. You should know that the project sample rate should be set to 44.1 kHz for voice recording. If you set the project sample rate lower than 44.1 kHz, then the quality of the sound may be hampered. However, the opposite is not true. You may not notice a difference with a higher sample rate. Higher sample rates also take up more space to store. There is no noticeable benefit from using a higher sample rate. If there is no particular reason for using a higher sample rate, keep it to 44.1 kHz. Why I'm emphasizing on the sample rate? The reason is many beginners blame the sample rate for their low quality audio. You will see many YouTube videos on sample rate and format, but the technical difference it creates does not matter much for good quality voice recording. If you cannot produce high quality voice over with 44.1 kHz, the sample rate is not the issue. You may have other issues like microphone or recording environment or bad audio processing. If you are not getting good quality audio, do not waste time blaming the sample rate. Instead, you have to search for other areas to identify why the recording is not optimal. The default sample format is 32-bit float and it should be set as that. 32-bit float gives some flexibility during audio processing. For example, a 16-bit audio can distort easily compared to 32-bit float. In simple words, 32-bit has more flexibility and there is no reason to choose another value. However, I want you to know another point about the sample format. There is another concept of file encoding and that is also represented by bit. For example, you may see requirements like the file should be encoded in 24-bit. You can set the encoding format during audio export. The file encoding and sample format are different things and you should not confuse one with another. The bottom line is to keep the sample format to the default 32-bit float and the sample rate to 44.1 kHz. If I recap the summary of this video, then it will be like this. Select the desired microphone for recording, select mono as the recording channel, and use the default format rate of 44.1 kHz and sample format of 32-bit float. In the device toolbar, there is another drop-down at the end. It is the drop-down for selecting playback devices. Playback device means your speaker or headphones that you will use to play your audio recording. Unless we use live monitoring, the playback device is not important during recording. Because we can set the playback when we are ready to listen to the recording. I will discuss more about this later. However, I have not discussed another important configuration of recording. You can see some meters here and it is related to the audio level. In the next lecture I will discuss about those. You are watching a video from my Audacity course for beginners. This course is a one-stop solution for audiobook narration, professional voiceover, solo podcasts, or any sort of voiceover with Audacity. If you want a complete step-by-step -step guide, this course is suited for you. You can get this course from this Patreon page. If you are looking for a robust learning experience, you can get the Audacity Bundle. The Audacity Bundle has a couple of courses, some pre-built macros, and a custom macro with professional EQ. You will find all the links in the description.